Hi and welcome to the Monday Angel Message. I'm Rachel Skulltalk. I'm an energy therapist and a abundance coach and I'm also an angel medium. I'm just checking because I've had two goes at this and it just switched off so I'm hoping we'll stay. So namaste. Welcome to the Monday Angel Message. You know, every time I um, go to type that, it comes out Moon Day because that's obviously what Monday is named after, being uh, um, Moon Day. But we have had some um, quite amazing energy changes over the weekend. We've had the solstice, winter solstice here, and summer solstice, solstice in the enormous northern hemisphere. Oh my gosh, can you tell I haven't <laughs> exercised my mouth yet today? Okay, so I've got three decks of cards out for you. Um, to give you a reading for the week ahead, talk to you a little bit about some stuff that I've got coming up and to give you a um, uplifting message from the angels to get you started on the week. So let's get started. I've got the angel um, cards, my new ones, which are called Ask an Angel. So I'm gonna put you a card from those and the Archangel Michael energy. Now Archangel Michael energy is always strong, but it's coming through stronger um, for today. It's really asking you to focus on protecting your energy and um, particularly those that have a bit of a hard time with your energy. If you feel like you get oversensitive, if you feel like that you um, maybe take on some of the energy from the collective consciousness or you just, you know, if you're going through your own thing and you just feel like you're a little bit more vulnerable, a little bit more open than usual, then this is a session for you. I'm gonna show you some different um, ways to keep your, your vibe high so that you can keep on manifesting. Because what often happens, and I've noticed this with a lot of clients, is that when we're in um, some kind of energetic hold, so it might be because of something you're going through, it might be because of um, a partner, or a friend, they might be going through something and you're kind of going through it with them. You're maybe taking on their, their um, difficulties a little bit. Or even if it's something that's going on in the world, it could be an intense planetary shift, it could be something going on in politics, I don't know. But sometimes as sensitive light workers, compassionate, um, energy sensitive people, which is what we're meant to be at this time, that is exactly who we are, we are not, kind of broken because we're energy sensitive. We're actually meant to be that way. It's part of revealing your gifts and it's part of the new age coming through, the new world coming through is, and I've said this for a long time since I wrote my book eight years ago, that the more sensitive, energetically sensitive, emotionally compassionate and sensitive people there are, they're bringing through the vibration of love the less likely it will be that we will destroy the planet, that we will be cruel to animals and people, that we will do unconscious things because we, we're numb and we've desensitized. So generations before us, um, there were always light workers, there were always sensitives, there were always people working for the greater good. And those people, you could say, were earth angels, just like you. And you know, people that really felt a strong passion to help people, to heal people, to see another way of looking at things rather than judgment and fear, to see it through the eyes of love and compassion and forgiveness and to try and find a better way. And I think that's the truth of what humans are. But I think through many generations and centuries of things like war, greed, you know, war is usually fought over land or oil or some kind of thing that, that the other party wants or because one country wants to invade another country for their resources or because some conflict has risen up, well, that's coming from the place of ego. And when people go through those things enough and they're coming through the from a place of fear, not love and connection, then humans will naturally try to harden themselves. They'll try to desensitize. So, so maybe in the First and Second World War, hi everyone that's online, I can't see any comments. It's not giving me comments today. I've got no idea why. Oh yeah, there I can see it now. Um, good morning. 
through, say, the First and Second World War, our grandparents and, and maybe your parents had to live through some hard times, maybe even things like the Depression. But in those hard times, the intensity of what was going on in their world and in the world, the greater world, was so painful that people had to find a way to deal with it. And so tucking their emotions away, carrying on, trying to, you know, survive was all that people could do. So as we've come out of that time in our countries, which, you know, America, um, Australia, the UK, in the West mostly, um, we, where we're not going through continued war and hardship, that is happening in other places, but we are able somehow to disconnect from that, that we're start, like, generations are starting to be feel it's safer for them to release the collective pain of the past, the trauma, and to actually feel. And so many people have their own problems because they've come from families that have those issues. But at the same time, if you're a sensitive, if you're energy sensitive, emotionally sensitive, if you're a person that um, comes from a place of compassion and love as your default setting, then you will find that you can't turn it off. And that's because our generation and the younger generation are unable to switch it off because the world needs to change. And so if you imagine all the people that were in the First World War, Second World War, and other centuries where there was a lot of um, violence and, and unrest, all those people were praying for peace. They were praying for, for quieter times. And this time now is about getting us all of those prayers coming to fruition. So even though it feels like when you look at the news and you look at politics in certain countries and you read um, all the troll comments on social media, you might go, the world is going completely nuts. It's not getting any better at all. But we have to understand that we're all coming from a place of trauma that is healing. And the fact that we can even look at those things and say that's wrong, that doesn't feel right to me. And we've got people like Marianne Williamson. Do you know Marianne Williamson? Have you been following her on social media? That she's running for presidency. She wrote a book called Return to Love. She's a teacher of Course in Miracles. She's she's authored amazing books. She's running for presidency of the United States. And she needs a lot of support, a lot of love. Um, so look her up. She, of course, wrote that famous speech um, about that Nelson Mandela is often credited for, but he spoke it, he, he gave the speech about us being not so afraid of our darkness, but more afraid of our light. So um, Marianne Williamson is someone that I'm really behind at the moment. But remember that your sensitivity is not a fault. It's not a weakness. You are not broken. And if you're feeling a lot, then all you need to do is to learn some really good energy healing techniques energy mastery techniques you need to learn to master your energy field and your thoughts and your um your life so that your energy is working for you not against you and so one example of that would be if you've had a lot of trauma in your life or you're carrying unconscious trauma from family line then i say line going backwards if you've got unconscious trauma that's in your body you may have an energy field that's very spiky and that spiky energy field, this is something I've come across with a lot of people who struggle with their energy. They're like, why am I constantly being disempowered? Why do I constantly feel on edge and fearful even when there's nothing fearful happening to me? Why do I feel crippled by anxiety? And often what I've discovered because the angels showed me this when I wrote my book, Loving Your Sensitive Self, eight years ago, and I channeled that book. And it's not channeled like like um, difficult language, it's, it's practical, you can read it like a normal book. Um, they channeled to me all of the different ways that people's energy behaves and that when our energy is spiky, it's like you've got lots of antenna sticking out and those antenna are programmed by you and your unconscious mind to pick up on fearful things, danger. But what happens is that you don't just pick up on danger for yourself. You pick up on every little bit of danger. So you go to the supermarket, you go out on holiday, you go to an airport, and you are just overwhelmed and bombarded by so much danger vibes 
and the vibes that other people are radiating about anxiety and fear. And it gets very confusing because you're not tuned into you, your intelligence, your intuition, you're tuned into bloody everything. And so I've learned how to do for people, how to pull those antenna energies out and to smooth up the energy field and to reconnect, reconnect to source because source and your intuition are all you need switched on. You don't need 10 dozen antenna out there picking up on everybody else's vibes. And so people go, oh, I'm so sensitive. Oh, I don't, can't, can't do anything about it. I've just got to you know, like deal with it. I just don't go out anymore. Or they get addictions or they become agoraphobic or they become resentful or they've just been, you know, live their lives this way. Not realizing that because we've never been taught at school about our energy and what our energy can do and what, where we are in history, which makes perfect sense, that we need to learn how to master our energy. And so that's just one example of how I can help someone. Because if you've got those antenna up all the time, you are wasting your energy. You're leaking a lot of energy. So you're going to be tired. You're going to be frazzled. You're going to be on edge. You're going to have anxiety conditions, maybe even depression, because you're literally like a little spiky magnet <laughs> drawing what you're afraid of to you. And when it heals, you heal. Your energy heals. And that's what healing is. It's returning to wholeness. And it's not just re it's not just a healer coming in and going, oh, I'm just going to heal you, wave a magic wand. It's about you getting the awareness, the insight, the wisdom, and then you go, aha, now I know how to look after my energy. And that when I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed, maybe I've got to check in that I haven't got spiky energy field and drawing that fear into me and then eventually you train your energy you train your inner self to stop doing those things so that can be life-changing for people you know I, i've met people who haven't been able to leave their home and um yeah natalie says mine's been spiky here and there um and some people who have had health conditions that have cleaned up because they've they've lost that um constantly giving out and losing energy all the time and being overwhelmed because what does your body do when you're constantly overwhelmed by fear messages you go into fight or flight which means your body's no longer doing its normal balanced function it's got the adrenaline pumping through your body it, it, your digestion switches off your muscles get tight you get headaches you get bad dreams you, you're in your back brain so you can't get into your front brain where your wisdom is your, your mind doesn't work the same, your body doesn't work the same, and that long-term can cause immunity problems. So that's why it's so important to first accept that you are a sensitive and to accept that you want to be sensitive, don't fight it, but that you need to take care of and look after your energy. So I'm just seeing who's online here. Hi, Kylie. Hi, Jess. Lovely to see you. Anita, Ida. Rhonda, hi darling, Natalie, of course, Fiona, Trisha. Um, thanks, Natalie, for that. And Jenny. Yeah, high cortisol levels, exactly, Jenny. She's she you got it, girl. High cortisol levels. And high cortisol levels means that you get belly fat, which none of us girls like, and which won't go away with normal dieting and exercise because cortisol tells it comes from our ancient messaging that we are in um, long-term chronic stress and long-term chronic stress in our ancient bodies when we were living in tribes meant starvation so cortisol tells our body to hold on to fat around our belly um, and cortisol can cause all kinds of hormonal problems it makes the menopause much worse makes your periods much worse makes um, gives you all kinds of um, immunity problems as well. So we've really got to look after our energy and that helps us look after our body. Hi, JC, Erica, lovely to see you. So I really wanted to talk about healing with you today, but obviously I had no idea that was coming out, but we've really got to be aware of where we are in history and the trauma that we may be carrying for our parents and grandparents and to release that so that we can get a hold of our vibration, our energy, and keep our vibe high and be that channel of 
pure channel of divine energy so that we can be of service and we can also receive the healing, the abundance and the love that we want. You can't receive those things when you're in a state of fight or flight, when, you're, when your energy's not right. It goes up and down. It's um, feast or famine, literally, or you just feel dreadful because one minute you're um, feeling okay and then for some reason you drop and that's when you're tuned into the collective consciousness. So it really is important that you keep your energy, an energy um, practice as part of your daily routine and it only needs to take a few minutes but it makes all the difference to how your day and your week and your month and your year will be because you won't be so distracted and knocked about by energy. Okay, so what message do the angels have for us today? So Archangel Michael, um, he's like my right-hand man when, well, maybe I'm his right-hand man when, when I do healing sessions. He's always talking to me and telling me what, what's needed. So he's saying to remind you to invoke him because he can act as a barrier of energy between um, you and any lower vibe. So that's a great start. And that's why I always bring Archangel Michael into my healing sessions and into my meditations as well. How did you go with the meditations? Did you end up managing to download it? Uh, Natalie says she's just had an aha moment. She shed a layer of belly fat. Yes, yes. And because we did a lot of work, didn't we, Natalie, on clearing some stuff that was pulling your energy out, which was no fault of your own may I say, um, yeah, it falls off when you, that belly fat falls off when you start to clear the cords and the, and the energies that are intruding on your energy field and to pull that energy in so it's nice and smooth and it interacts more clearly with the divine source. Okay. So Archangel Michael is asking for an invocation. So we ask for and invite the presence of Archangel Michael into this energetic space our virtual space and to this physical space so if this moment you want to invoke Archangel Michael into your space just say yes in your mind or aloud and um, we ask Archangel Michael to help us keep our energy vibration high and clear this week and ask Archangel Michael and Divine Source to help you with your energy, to guide you, to release anything that doesn't serve you that's from the lower vibrations, which might be collective consciousness trauma, might be family ancestral trauma, might be something from this lifetime or any other lifetime that is in your reality that is causing your energy to respond with fear. And then I'm seeing Archangel Michael smoothing over your energy field and giving you this beautiful healing of purple and violet and golden energy, which is almost looks like a marble effect around your energy field. And as he's doing that, he's asking you to then state very clearly what it is you want to manifest this week. This is the bit that I love. I love the manifesting and helping seeing what happens when your energy stops vibrating to fear and vibrating to a higher level. So what are you invoking into your energy this week? What prosperity do you want? What support do you want? What health healing do you want? Okay. I love it when the cards... <laughs> I love it when the cards reflect what I've rambled on about. It happens a lot. So I shouldn't say rambled. I didn't ramble. When um, Archangel Michael was, is with you, he's protection. And he yes, he is a buffer to lower energies. But he never wants you to feel like you are a victim, like you're helpless and, oh, I need protecting. It's not that. He's teaching you about your energy. And so what he's saying is when you are surrounded by the highest vibrations of all, which is what the angels carry as messengers from the source, you are also raising your own vibration because you're no longer being affected or infected by fear, negativity, violence, conflict, the stuff that isn't always what you want. It's not what you've 
personally invoked. It's just that you haven't been conscious of your energy, so you've allowed it in. All right, that's what the message for today is. What have you allowed in? What is coming in that you're not conscious of? And isn't it interesting that we get this card, Hidden Worlds? That's the world of energy. So the angel on this one is Raziel. And Raziel is the only angel of spiritual understanding. He helps us to understand the world from a spiritual perspective, from an energetic perspective. We live in an energy universe. Yes, the things seem solid. This is more denser energy so that we can touch it, feel it, and see it. When you become more aware of the energy universe, that starts to become solid to you too. But you start to realize that the energy serves the material. So what starts in energy becomes material. So that's why we know that when we have an illness, for instance, maybe we, we look at what created that. What energy have I been holding on to or what have I been allowing or have I been holding for someone else that has manifested as this or has been even intruded because I have, my energy is not, not protected. So the hidden worlds. The guidance, look at that. Now, as I was shuffling these cards and pulling them out, Archangel Michael saying to me, invoke me. Tell everybody to invoke me. So in my Rich Angelic Alchemy program, which is a group program that I recently did, I've gone really, very dark, haven't I? Um, we did a lot of invocation. We learned about how to invoke the angels. And incidentally, that course, which is a six-part course, um, is um, going to soon be available on my website to purchase as a digital course. So if you couldn't attend live, you can you can just purchase it. So that's going up very soon. Protection from Archangel Michael. So it's important that you protect your energy. So, you know, we're in times where things are shuffling around, things are moving. There's positive energies and negative energies. When things, when there's a lot of light coming in, the dark can sometimes get darker. And sometimes that's great because that means we get to see what it is. So we see people's agendas or we see something negative we didn't see before. And that doesn't mean um, there's anything wrong with you. It just means that you're being shown so that you can make decisions which are best for you. And the outcome of really looking after your energy in the way that we have spoken today is joy. I just absolutely adore this picture and this card. I'm going to let you absorb that a little bit. And there she is with her wings. Ramalia, Ramal, Ramalia, Raphael, Ramalia. Yeah, I can't say it. Um, so this is about you becoming the highest expression of who you are. So three things. You are not broken. There's just something for you to learn. There is healing to be done. You are headed towards being offered all the opportunities from the universe and from your angels, you're being pushed almost towards becoming a highest expression of who you are. And while that can be rocky, it can be very rocky because you have to let go of some things that are not the expression of who you are. You have to be introduced to the reality of some things. I recently discovered someone in my own life, not um, um, a personal relationship necessarily, who I trusted, who was really untrustworthy. And that was hard. It was hard to realize. I had to go through the emotions. And then I had to let that person go. And then I had to deal with myself because it was like, oh, crap. Look at what I've been putting up with. Look at what I did wasn't willing to look at before. But that's okay. If I hang on to the guilt, I'll stay stuck there. And that's not what it's about. I saw it. And when I saw it, I removed it. And that's the important thing. And I did it with love and all is well. But and how that person reacts is none of my business. That's their stuff. How I responded is my stuff. So it's hard because we have to see it to, rem to do it. And sometimes when we're in denial, we get bashed around a bit. And it's only when we come out of that that we go, okay, now I see what the problem was. And those things that we haven't seen before, remember our first card was Hidden Worlds? The things that we hadn't seen before can cause so much trouble because... We haven't, we can't see the silent saboteurs. We can't see the, the, what do they call it? Smiling assassins that are, are pretending to be one way and they might not be, um, have an agenda, but it might just be someone that's dragging your energy down. It might be something that you're doing 
that you go, oh, this is okay, but it's actually poisoning your body or it's poisoning your energy. So this is what this week is about, is revealing what's hidden and also coming into awareness of the energy that surrounds you. I'm glad that you loved the meditation. It's still up on my website, um, The Divine Activation, if you didn't tune into it. Go to um, rachelscoltot.com slash blog. And when you look on the blog page, you'll find um, there's a picture of uh, like a, an angel picture. It's very pink and it's got a full moon. And there at the top of it, there is the meditation that I released last week, which was the divine activation meditation that is part of the, um, the ones that I make for my um, Rich Radiant Angel people. So when I've got someone on a Rich Radiant Angel program, six or 12 weeks, they get personalized meditations and they also get access to a large um, library of meditations that I already have channeled or made. And um, so you can still access that. It's not something I usually would release. It wouldn't even be for sale on my website, that one. So if you want, want it, Divine Activation Meditation, I'm getting a lot of great feedback about it. Um, Natalie says, synchronized. You were thinking about the Book of Joy. I'd love to know more about that one, Natalie. So that... There you go. That's giving you a sign. Fixing, Jacey's fixing her financial mess. So um, bless that mess, Jacey. Um, thank you, Erica. That's very kind of you. Thanks for being here, Mish and Cheryl and Lena. Hi, Lena. And Fiona said she liked the meditation. Thank you, Fiona. I really appreciate you. So lots and lots of love to you. Thanks for being here. I feel like I talk a lot on these things, but I guess that's the point. So if you would like to work with me, someone said to me the other day, do you do sessions? And I'm like, oh my God, how have I not let people know that? I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with people. You can go to my website, the services link. My website's got a brand new, beautiful front page if you want to have a look at it. It's gorgeous. I'm very proud of it. Um, the services link, I do MP3 readings, which means I use this stunning microphone here. And when you send me your questions, I record you a reading 30 minutes or a one hour. And I answer all of your questions. I channel some of it and I send that to you by email. If you want a personal one-on-one -on -one energy therapy session with me called a soul clarity session, which will have guidance, insights, messages, um, and lots of healing you go to that services link and choose the soul clarity sessions link or um the video call which is how i do it and you can have a one hour or a 90 minute session i only do a few of those a week because mostly i'm working with my rich radiant angel clients who are working on a full program of sessions with me so we're working on a particular subject in their lives things that need cleaning up clearing up healing financial messes, healing um, energy um, issues, working through and empowering and really healing and clearing the energy so that then we focus on what it is that they are manifesting and creating and get the guidance and the steps, practical steps for um, working. So it's really great if you are ready to go deep and do something um, to really shift your vibration, but really shift your life. This is a life transformational package, Rich Radiant Angel. That's also on my website if you want to read about it. So um, by all means, if you want to work with me, go and check out the website and it will tell you more. Thank you so much. Namaste. Take care. <laughs>